Hey everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Stone Spine Architects, a role player tale. But before we do, we just want to remind you to subscribe so you can see your videos as they come out. Okay, this game is designed by Jordan Aiden and it is published by Thunderwork Games. All right, so you've all probably heard that Greek story of uh, that Minotaur who is trapped inside of a labyrinth and they basically send people into that labyrinth and they go to die. And it's like a big deal when someone finally solves the labyrinth. All right, so in this twist on the uh, story, we are the lab, the Minotaurs and we are making the labyrinth and we're trying to make it as challenging as possible so that we can trap people and like Yay. defeat them, defeat our heroes. All right, so that's how this is gonna work. We are going to try to make the best possible labyrinth and we're gonna get school points for a variety of things as we try to trap as many people as possible and win by getting points. Let me give you a quick overview of how to play. All right, here's our setup for Stone Spine Architects. All right, this is kind of the main board where all the things are gonna happen for all the players. And over here, we have kind of the individual player board. All right, to start off with, we have a market. At the end of every round, we're gonna collect some money based off the cards that we've played and spot some with some treasure chests that we've accumulated. And we're gonna use that money to buy cards or buy items from the market. These are tokens that you're gonna be adding on to the cards that you're gonna be buying. This is where you keep track of your money. This whole track over here is your money. It does not last from round to round. So if you don't spend it, you lose it but it might gain you some uh, turn order track advantages. Over here is the turn order track. It's kind of a priority for when you're drafting things as well as a tiebreaker. This comes with a really nice little tray to hold all your bits when you refill the market. And also there's gonna be new cards that come out each round as well. So you're coming with new prices and new quantity of items as well as new qu items themselves. We're always gonna have one global objective over here. It's gonna come from a deck over here. Basically throughout the whole game, we have that one objective. Each game will use a new objective. Over here we have challenges. These are gonna change out each round as we draft them. So when you're buying things, if you are the person who stops buying first, whether because you ran, ran out of money or because you just wanna stop buying things, you're gonna be the first one to choose one of these challenges. Those are gonna be point cards that you're gonna be able to use at the end of the game, but you draft them after, at the end of every round. And there's a whole bunch of those challenges. First one to get to the finish using money gets to draft first, and then once at the end of the round, we're gonna replenish so they have new ones to see for the next round. All right, over here on this side, every player is going to start the game by getting a couple of player aids. These are double-sided. This gives you all the iconography you might come across. You have a starting sequence. You have the setup reminder. And you also have the final scoring. So everything you might need on these player aids, ready to go. Two cards, double-sided. All right, and then we have our dungeons themselves. We're going to get some blueprints that we're going to be basically telling us how to set up our dungeon. And that's the main point of the game. Every player is going to be dealt one of these dungeon blueprints. It's going to basically tell you uh, how you need to set up your blueprint. It's going to give you four different terrain types, whether it be caves or stone. In this case, we've got caves. We're going to make a four by four grid here. And if we can get those four spots to be caves, we're going to get some points. Also, we have some different other objectives. This particular square, this particular square, this particular square. They're asking for particular kinds of villains or some monsters that we might need to run into. Also, we need to have a trap over here, this purple spot with a little trap symbol. It shows where our entrance is and our exit. And across the bottom of here, the more of those things, the more of the objectives that we were able to accomplish, the more points that we're going to get. If we're able to fulfill all those eight objectives, we're going to get 20 points into the game, which is huge. If you everything that you miss, you kind of get lower and lower on the, uh, the score track over there. All right, so let's go ahead and start up here. Basically, we know that we need to have our entrance here, and that's where to put our little marker. All right, now let's go through and figure out how to actually make our dungeon. This is a card drafting game, meaning we're gonna get a hand of cards, we're gonna choose one of them, put it into our dungeon, and then pass the rest. We'll get a new hand from the person to our left or right, depending on the turns, and then we're gonna keep on doing that over and over again, taking one, passing the rest, taking one, passing the rest, until we finish the round. Each round, you're gonna finish off one row of your dungeon. It doesn't have to be from left to right, it can be in any order you want, but you need to finish all four of these for that round, and then the next round, you're gonna finish off the next row, and the third, and finally the fourth round, you're gonna finish off the fourth row. Eventually, there's gonna be a lot to think about, but right now, the main thing we're concerned about is this card right here for the first round. We're trying to set up an exit out of our, our, our kind of our entrance spot there. We wanna make sure we get one of those monsters over there, and we try to get a cave room over there. All right, so we have our first starting hand, um, we don't really have a great way of leaving our cavern at this point, you know, leave our entrance. There's that one, that one gets us out, but I'm not sure I love that. So let's do this one for now. This one fulfills our having that kind of that red monster in that third spot. All right, so we're going to pass that hand, and then we're going to get a new hand, this time with only four cards. All right, so let's take a look at those. Um, let's go ahead and use this one. Let's next our entrance 
to the next card over there. Now, it is not required to connect your entrances and your exits and all that stuff. However, it's usually beneficial. You're going to get a lot of points at the end of the game, which I'll explain later if you're able to connect everything. Each one of these cards has spots for four different items on it. Most of them have two, sometimes they have three or one, uh, but those are going to be where the tokens come into play. When you draft those tokens and buy them from the market later on, you're able to add them into those spots where there isn't currently something printed on the card, which is great. These are also multi-use cards. At the bottom of every card is some money. It's going to tell you how much money you're going to gain at the end of that round. So now in our next turn, what we're going to do is we're going to draft our third card and put it into our dungeon. All right, so for our next hand, let's look at our cards. All right, none of these really combine that well. What we could do is we could fulfill this cave symbol, again, on our card over here. We need a cave in that top left symbol, or we can kind of continue off of that path and be able to get down. Um, I don't want to miss out on those points over there, so I'm going to go ahead and place this cave spot, even though it doesn't really connect to anything, I'm just going to do it anyways, so that way we make sure we hit that objective. All right, for our last hand, we've only got two cards to choose from. We have some different options there. Um, let's go ahead and put this one over there. This does kind of connect to our pathway and builds down, so we'll be able to build off of that in the future. All right, at this point, we have, we're going to discard our last card instead of passing it, and we have come finished the first row, and therefore finished the first round. What we're going to do is we are going to count up all the money at the bottom of these cards. We've got three, six, uh, eight. We've got 11 coins to spend. Additionally, you might find some uh, treasure chest symbols on the cards themselves, and you're going to scan the cards for those. In this case, we don't have any, so we just have 11 coins to spend. Whoever accumulated the most amount of money is actually going to go first during the market phase. So what's going to happen is you're going to use that chance to buy some of these tokens and add things to your board. Maybe you add some monsters, maybe you actually get a chance to add some points to your board, but they're going to go to those kind of those four quadrants on each card, however you want to place them out there. At any time, even while you still have money and there's still things for you to buy, you can just say pass. And what you're going to do is you're going to basically go to the top priority of the next round. And that's when you draft those challenge cards going into the next round. Those challenge cards might give you points at the end of the game based off of various parameters. This particular one has to do with on the very outside left and the outside right, having entrances and exits. And the more you have, the more points you're going to get. Uh, this particular one has to do with having traps that are not the same. The more you have, the more points you're going to get. Some cards might even just be just straight up points, like this one. This is 10 points, which is a great way to draft that, and you don't really have to work towards it, you just know you're going to get 10 points at the end of the game. After everyone has finished going to the market, buying whatever they want to buy, and then getting one of those challenge cards, next we're going to go to basically our second round. We're going to keep on filling out our dungeon, our second row now, and we're going to cover up the coins because those are no longer relevant going to the second round. The game is going to end once you've completed your fourth and your final row of your dungeon. You're going to have one last chance to go to the marketplace, and then the game is going to end. You're going to get points from a variety of areas. First off, whoever has the top priority at the end of the game is going to get some points. Whoever had did the best job of filling that main goal throughout the whole game that was on the main board, you're going to get points for that. Maybe it's having the most of a particular kind of monster, uh, the least of a certain kind of trap, whatever the case is. Then, over the course of the game, you will have gathered three of those challenge cards. You're going to find out what your final score on all three of those is and record it. And then, there's going to be on the board itself, you're going to have some stars that are giving you positive points, like this one here. And you might even have some negative points. Some of the really strong cards, to balance them out, come with negative victory points. So you're going to add all that up and put on the scorecard. Then, like we mentioned earlier, you're going to go through this card, and you're going to see how many of those blueprint items that you've actually managed to fulfill. The better you did, the more points you're going to get from that. And then the very last thing is a little bit confusing, but basically you're going to have a 4x4 four four grid, right? And you're going to have an entrance to it, and you're going to have an exit to it. We're going to put that little marker. For every card that can be traced back to the entrance uh, through paths that are open and viable, you're going to get one point. So in this case, we have one, two, and three. This one, because it has kind of a, a doorway going into a wall, this one is not connected to our entryway. So that's not going to get us points. The exact same thing is going to happen with the exit point. For every one of our cards that is connected back to the exit point through paths, it's going to be worth one point. But here's the kicker. If you are able to successfully gather and connect uh, your entrance to your exit, every card that's connected to both by legal pathways is going to be worth two points because of the entrance and the exit. You're going to add up all of your points from all the different categories, and whoever has the most points wins the game. The game really eases you into it, at least with all the scoring that happens, because there's a lot of different ways to score in this game. And sometimes when you have a game where there's a lot of ways to score, it's like overwhelming at first and you don't know what to do. But this game eases you into a direction. So every player starts with that blueprint. Okay, I know that if I can hit all of these, 
I am going to score this amount of points. These, this is what I'm looking for, especially in the first drafting. This is what I'm looking for. <clears throat> and then also the goal card that everybody is working towards. And then the next round you get one other way to score. And the next round you get another way to score, but it really eases you into it. So you're not like overwhelmed with all these choices right from the get go. You're easing into these choices, these choices and different ways to score. So I really liked how it did that. All right, so the three to five player game uh, basically has normal drafting rules. Take take one, pass the rest. Take one, pass the rest. So the, the hand sizes are dwindling, and as things get to you, it's all kind of new stuff that you haven't seen before for the most part. Um, the two player variant, the, what they did to make that feel more like the three, three to five player version is actually very, very simple and very, very good. Uh, so you have a hand of cards, right? You choose one to play for yourself, but you also choose one to discard, and then you draw a new one to replace what you discarded and pass that. So that way, the hand size is five, four, three, two, one, the way it should, but at the same time, it is such, it's done in such a way that um, it simulates that being an extra player, right? You, some of the cards that you saw are not gonna be come, come back around to yeah. you. But it's, and also, I like how it kind of changed over the course of the game. When you first have your first fresh hand, you might have a card that you, you played, but there's also a card that you really liked in that set, and you're like, I'm going to keep this in there, hoping that it might come back to me later. Yeah. Um, so you get rid of the worst cards. But then as the hand size dwindles, you're on like your third or fourth round, then what you do is you try to get rid of the best cards, that way your opponent can't use them. Uh, it was a very cool way to just kind of simulate a third player, but also give you some kind of dynamic choices as the game went on. You can also just um, get rid of all the cards that have a lot of um, money on them, which is what I like to do. <laughs> Bankrupt <laughs> me. Yeah, yes, that was my full, that was all I was trying to do. Um, I really liked the market tokens in this game. So you're trying to meet all these objectives and you're trying to get things to happen. And sometimes the cards just don't have what you need or people are drafting them before you can draft them. So I really like there's that opportunity in the market for you to get still get what you need for your scoring parameters. I, I just don't... I didn't feel like it was just a pure luck. I felt like there's a way to try to manipulate and get what you needed in order to score the highest. Was it always going to happen? Absolutely not. You're not going to max out on all of the different opportunities to score unless you're Ryan. Then you might max out on some of them. But most gamers will not. But you still have this opportunity to try to get more points. So I like that if you can't get it in the card, you still have the market to try to get it. Yeah. I think there's also a little miniature promo pack, a little kind of mini expansion that I, I would recommend. It's called Shrines and Fountains. It's basically just uh, just a handful of cards that you shuffle into the main deck, and it's kind of new ways to score, new ways to play around with things. Um, and it doesn't disrupt anything at all because it takes place in the middle of the card. Yeah. You have the, we have the four quadrants, and that's kind of always going to stay true. But this affects the middle of the card, so that way you have things going on there. Also, there's some cards that are double use. You know how there's the caves and the stone uh, parts of the, the, the tiles? Uh, there's some cards in that little promo pack that are both with a cave and a uh, stone, which is, uh, I don't know, cool because you can draft that and you can put it anywhere and it's going to score for any part of your card that you need it yeah. to. Um, so I liked this game. I enjoyed playing it. It's a very, very solid, solid game. Um, I don't know if I'm going to ask for it again. Hmm. Like, I don't know if I'm going to... It's not that I'm not going to remember it because it really is a solid gameplay. It's just a game... <clears throat> that I'm not going to ask for, but if somebody wanted to play it, I'd be more than willing to play with them, if that makes sense. So it's a very, very solid game, very solid mechanisms, easy to get into, easy to play, easy to feel like smart in when you score really well, when you can get one of those things to work out. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to be asking for it. That makes sense. I had a good time. I enjoyed this one quite a bit. I felt like the drafting was cool, it was simple. Uh, I felt like the kind of laying thing out your tableau and building that w had the double purpose of giving you income as well as kind of building out your, your labyrinth. I like that a lot. Um, I think that you had a lot of good choices. You had a choice oh, of yeah. what card to take, you had a choice of where to put it, you had a choice of what to buy. There's just lots of good choices. Um, I enjoyed this one quite a bit. Everybody, thank you so much for watching it. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. You guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. You guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this game was provided to us by a publisher for in exchange for a fair and honest review. And if you want to see more stuff, check out over here to see something we think you might like. And over here, we think uh, that YouTube has picked out a great video for you. You're going to love. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.